So welcome to beautiful Menorca, Spain. I'm here teaching at the 2023 Photo Pills Camp. This is my first trip to Spain and it's been absolutely fantastic. It's an incredibly beautiful country and I couldn't be more excited to uh, share with you one of these. This is actually the, the very first photograph I took uh, our group to, Sunrise. This is, a, 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 gosh, all the days run together. I think it was maybe six days ago now. But one of the things that was most interesting about this photograph, I, I ended up doing a post-processing session on this photograph with Albert Dros just a couple of days ago. And uh, the attendees really seemed to like it, wanted to share it with you all as well. But I think what's so important about this photograph right here is just the, the use of directional light. So there was definitely light rising here. This is a blue hour photograph. The sun wasn't quite up above the horizon just yet, but it was casting all this nice, soft, subtle light all through here, it was illuminating this area here a little bit. These rocks right here and these uh, plants here were catching a little bit of this light. And I knew when I was capturing this image that although the light was a little bit dull right now, or I should say at that moment, I knew I'd really be able to emphasize that in post-processing. And I'm always thinking about how I'm going to edit a photograph while I'm in the process of taking that photograph. And I did, when I did this in Bali, uh, the, an on-location editing video, the most common um, response was my use of radio filters to direct light. And I think it's one of the most powerful ways to edit a photo. And this right here is an even better example. So to jump right into it, I'm not gonna go through all of the, the basic adjustments that I did, but I'll show you the before and after. So this is where it started and where we're at right now. This is the beginning and this is where we're currently at. So as always, I'm gonna reduce the clarity a little bit just to kind of soften down the larger details in the scene. I'm gonna boost the texture a little bit just to increase the, the structure of the larger size details. I'm sorry, the smaller size details. And I'm gonna reduce the dehaze a little bit. And that right there just creates a, a little bit softer, a little bit more atmospheric, kind of a glowy look to the overall photograph and kind of takes the edge off the overall scene. So what I wanna do from here is I'm gonna close down the basic section and I'm gonna come over here to the filters. Now, I always like to start with the, I should say the, the where the, the largest amount of light is coming from. And I work from the larger areas and I kind of work down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a radio filter around this area here because this is where the sun was rising. So I'm gonna come up to radio gradient we're gonna draw this huge radius all the way across the image. We reduce it down a little bit, put it on an angle. And basically what I'm doing is I'm replicating the way the light was interact or the way the, the light was being directed in the overall scene because that's what drew me to this composition. When I first got into photography, I used to get on location, search for compositions, and then find a composition and wait. And I'd sit there and wait and wait and wait and just hope that light would hit my composition or atmosphere would come to my composition. And sometimes it would work, but often it would not. What I like to do now is get on location and look for interesting light, build a composition around that interesting light, photograph it, and when that light fades, go find where the light moved to. And then wherever that light is now, build a composition around that. So photographing the light as opposed to just finding a composition and hoping it arrives. So this is what drew me to this location here, or this composition. So now that I have this nice radio filter across the, the entire scene, mimicking what the sun was doing, I'm gonna increase the exposure quite a bit, maybe to somewhere about like that. I'm gonna reduce the highlights a little bit because I, I don't want this area of the scene to lose detail. I really just want this light raking through here. And then I'm gonna come down to presence and I'm gonna soften this area down a little bit, maybe negative 20. I'm gonna add a little bit more negative dehaze. Because if you think about it, if you're on location and you see light coming through a specific area, that area automatically has a little bit softer, more diffused look to it. And I really wanna mimic that. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna increase the temperature just a touch. You really wanna be careful with increasing the uh, the, the temperature, usually people like to, to warm this up because you know once again, you're, you're enhancing sunlight, sunlight is warm. You really wanna be careful that you don't in, introduce too much warmth because it's really easy to, to go overboard. So now let's toggle this on and off. So this is uh, before and after, before and after, and I think that's starting to look good. Now I'm gonna create another mask and let's go ahead and let's just do select sky. 
And I'm gonna show you a real kind of a, a quick way to make these sky edits look a bit more realistic. So you can see Select Sky did a fantastic job, but look how defined that edge is of that mask. It almost looks too realistic. And in real life, if you're at the coast and you see this, the, uh, the sky where it meets the coastline, it's not an abrupt change. There's like light spill over there, there's light bleed. So you wanna make that look a little bit more realistic. These uh, Lightroom masks almost look too refined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the exposure of the sky just a touch. I'm going to maybe reduce the highlights a little bit. Do I wanna do anything with the contrast? Yeah, let's boost the contrast a touch just to add a little bit of drama to the sky. Do anything with the black point maybe lift the black point up just a little bit clarity is a great way to add a little bit of drama to a sky as well so we'll introduce a little bit of clarity i think right there looks pretty good we could probably even warm the sky up just a little bit maybe there introduce a little bit of magenta and let's toggle that on and off before and after before and after now to kind of create a softer transition zone with these masks, it's real simple. So we're just gonna hit these three dots and we're gonna come down here to uh, intersect mask with a luminous, no, I'm sorry, a linear gradient. And then we're gonna hold on the shift key to keep it straight. And I'm gonna draw this linear gradient right across the horizon line. Now, as I talk, move this up and down, you can see that here, let me reduce this exposure more so you can see what that gradient's doing. Now you can see how much of a, a softer transition that is. So I'm gonna put it right near the horizon line. I'm gonna bring my exposure back to where I had it before, which I believe was right there. And now that created a much softer feather in that, in that uh, the sky edit. So it creates a much more realistic effect. And I do that every single time I use uh, the, the, uh, the, I guess the select sky feature inside of Lightroom. So I think that's looking pretty good right there. Now, what I wanna do is like I mentioned before, I work uh, from the larger areas of light and I work down. So the area that really drew me to this composition was right here. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm sorry, right here. So I'm gonna come up here and hit a plus. Let's add another radial gradient and I really wanna emphasize this light. So I'm gonna put a mask right across the edge. We're gonna swing it all the way over. I think I'm gonna, going to even angle it down a touch lift it up a little bit. And I think something about right here is starting to look pretty good. Pull it over a little bit more. Let's increase the exposure to about right here. And now you can really see that this area of rock was a different color, a different tone than everything else. Everything else had this kind of blue look to it. This rock had this kind of nice white tone to it, had a little bit of orange on it as well. And it had just this very interesting structure and texture to it and the light was hitting it. So I really wanna bring that out. So I'm gonna bring the exposure up a fair amount. Let's add a little bit of warmth to it, just a touch, nothing too overdone. And then let's toggle this, uh, this uh, mask on and off. So this is before that mask and after. And I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna increase the, the exposure just a little bit more so you can easily see that at home. I'm thinking that is coming together, turning off all the masks with no masks, with the masks, with and without, we're starting to come together. Now I want to add some more of that light around the foreground and hitting those plants as well. And what I'm gonna do is after we add these, uh, these couple more masks, I'm gonna take it into Photoshop and I'll show you a really cool way to add a little bit of a very, very targeted glow and using some selective sharpening to really kind of draw the viewer's eye through a certain path in the photograph. So we're gonna create new mask, radial gradient once again, and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna just draw one right across this area and kind of pull it over here. I wanna add just a little bit of additional luminance through here, and then we're gonna get more specific and add uh, a little bit of brightness to those specific plants. So I'm thinking somewhere right around there looks pretty good. I kind of like how the foreground through here is still a little bit darker. So I think I'm gonna leave that, maybe pull this up a touch to about like that. Come up here to create new mask again, radio gradient, and let's just put a mask here, increase the exposure a little bit, and then I'm gonna right click and duplicate radio gradient and just drag it over here, which is a huge time saver. And then I'm gonna put one right here, and then one more, right click, duplicate, and put one, if I can grab it, one right here 
and put that on an angle and reduce the size of those just a little bit. And now all three of these are on one mask layer. So any adjustment I make to that specific mask is actually going to impact all three of those plants, which is cool. So increase the exposure a little bit there. You could even increase the, the warmth of that just a touch. And I'm gonna close this down. And now I want to go over here to the HSL section because I wanna come down to the green luminance and you'll be able to see what's happening to that one plant when I bring this up, which is really nice. So I'm gonna bring that to a point right there. I'm also gonna shift these greens more towards green to about right here, I think. And the yellow's a little bit more towards there, I think is looking pretty good. And let's see, is there any other mask I want to apply here? I normally would add a linear gradient to the foreground and just kind of you know go from dark to light just a little bit, but it already naturally has one, so I don't think I need to do that. And I like to do that because that dark to light creates a, a transition zone. It automatically adds a little bit of depth as opposed to having your, your foreground and your midground the same luminance or the same brightness value. I like to start it off a little bit darker and lead into the frame a little bit lighter. I think that's just a great and super, super easy way just to add a, a little bit of a additional depth using light. Now, I think I'm gonna come up here and I like the way that the histogram is starting to kind of fill itself out a little bit, but I'm gonna do that little mid-tone boost trick. I know I made a video on this a few, a couple months ago actually. If you come to the color grading section, since there isn't a, a mid-tone slider inside a Lightroom, this is kind of a cool workaround. If you just come to color grading and select mid-tones and come over here to luminance, and if you pay attention to the mid-tone section of the histogram, which is right here, you can kind of see it highlighted. Watch that area as I drag this luminance up. It's really affecting that area only, which is fantastic. So I'm just gonna do a slight, actually I'm gonna do, yeah, a fairly aggressive mid-tone boost, but then I'm gonna come back to the basic section and just reduce the overall exposure just a little bit like that. Now, if we toggle the entire edit on and off, so this is where we started, and this is where we're at right now, this is before and this is after. Last thing before I take this over to Photoshop real quick, I'm gonna come down to the calibration section and just boost this uh, blue primary saturation channel. Nothing crazy, but just somewhere maybe about right there, I think looks pretty good. And let's add a very, very soft and subtle vignette to the photograph. So once again, before and after, before, and after and by having the photograph a little bit darker makes those areas that we brightened up even more uh, uh, accentuated which is really nice and when we toggle the before and after on and off you can see that there's directional light now before it's all kind of the this kind of flat but now you can see that there's light coming through this area and spilling over through here which is really really nice so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this photo over to Photoshop and do some selective sharpening and also apply that specific glow to certain areas of the image. So I'm gonna come up here to Photo, Edit in Adobe Photoshop with Lightroom adjustments. All right, so now that what this is open, I'm just gonna hit Command-J to duplicate this layer. And what I'm gonna do is let's first apply an Orton effect to these very specific areas of a photograph. Now, if you ask 10 photographers how they apply the Orton effect, we'll probably get 10 different answers. I'll show you the way that I do it. But what I like to do is only apply this Orton glow to the highlights of a photograph. Because if you think about it, highlights and areas of light, that glows. Shadows don't glow. So I don't want my shadows to glow, I want my highlights to glow. So the way I apply the Orton effect is, I'm gonna come up here to image, I'm sorry, I'm gonna come up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And since I captured this with a 100 megapixel file or camera, I'm going to set this radius to 102 megapixels, which is the exact um, amount of uh, pixels on my Fuji camera. So I'm gonna hit okay here, and you'll see that the photograph is completely blurred out. The next step is come to image, adjustments, brightness contrast, and I'm gonna take this brightness to about 65, and then I'm gonna take this contrast to about 85, and I'm gonna hit okay. And what this does is kind of helps those colors kind of bleed into one another. So say where, where areas of maybe yellow meet an area of blue, that, that uh, transition zone won't be so abrupt. It'll kind of bleed into each other. And this has this kind of nice painterly look to it. So now I'm gonna come up here to Lumenzia. That's the engine I use for uh, luminosity masking. And I'm gonna hit lights one. And what that's gonna do is basically give me the ability to only apply this uh, Orton effect 
to the brightest areas of the image, which is exactly where I want them to be. So let me close this down. And when I toggle this on and off, you can see that that's exactly where it applied it. And now I'm just gonna reduce this opacity, usually somewhere between 15 or 20. And now as I toggle this on and off, you can see what that has done. It makes a huge, huge difference. And this is a great way to, to direct the viewer's attention a little bit more. Now, one of my favorite things to do from here is to use selective sharpening to kind of attract the viewer's attention to certain areas of the scene. If you think about it, if you're standing somewhere, areas that are closer to you have more detail, have more structure. Areas closer to you usually appear more vibrant. So you can use those kind of techniques to, to kind of draw the viewer's eye to a certain place in the scene that you want them to kind of look at first. So what I'm gonna do is I created another layer right here. I'm gonna come up here to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen, and let this load up. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put it up quite high so you can really see it at home. So somewhere to about like this, amount 440 radius 4.2 and hit okay. And if I zoom in here, zoom in quite a bit, toggle this on and off, you can see that it applied the sharpening all throughout the scene, which is not what I wanna do. So now that the whole entire scene is sharpened, I'm gonna put a layer mask on this and I'm gonna invert it and make it black. So now that none of that sharpening is showing through, but I'm gonna use a white paintbrush and paint in that area, that sharpening in only the areas that I want it. So I'm gonna make sure white is selected, which it is. Come up here to paintbrush with a nice soft feather, hardness zero, opacity 100%, flow 100%, and I'm going to paint white on top of this black layer mask. And you can see right here, so anything that I paint in white, that sharpening is gonna come through. So I want it to be all right through here, maybe this plant here, maybe this area here, right through here, just like that. And that is about it. So now when I zoom in to this area, once again, this is the only places that you'll see that sharpening. Now, I normally wouldn't apply that much sharpening, but I wanted you to be able to see it at home. It's kind of a hard thing to see uh, on a video. But from here, what I would usually do is just kind of walk away from the scene or walk away from my computer, maybe revisit it tomorrow morning or in a few hours later once my eyes have a chance to attend, kind of reset from looking at this. And then I'll make some more tweaks. I always find weird things wrong with the photo. You know, maybe like this area right here is already looking maybe a little bit too bright. So maybe I would subdue it a little bit. But I really like the directional light now coming from the upper left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner. It looks much better than it did in this original scene when, let me go over here to develop and hit the backslash key just so you can see the before and after right here where there really was no directional light. Now I think it looks much, much better. So I do hope that information was helpful. I know the last time I did this, it seemed to be a very popular thing on location editing videos. So wanted to make sure I did one while I was here in beautiful Menorca, Spain. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below and I will get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you checking out this week's video and I will see you when I get home next Wednesday. Bye.